Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, I am the Curious Owlbear and I'm here to explore everything Dungeons and Dragons. Today, we're on a journey that takes us over the open oceans. Perhaps we're journeying to a new quest location, or just exploring a new continent, but there will be plenty of time for random encounters along the way. Before we unfurl the sails, take a moment to hit that subscribe button to see more D&D videos in the future. As of the filming of this video, we are just 10 subscribers away from our custom URL, so let's hit that goal. With that out of the way, let's dive into today's encounters. The players have elected to hire the crew of a rather large galley that will take them on this lengthy sea voyage. They board the ship, and it slowly maneuvers out of the port and into the open ocean. It's a wonderful day for sailing. The strong wind fills the sails pulling the ship ahead at a good pace as the sun warms the characters' backs. Not long after they exit the harbor, they are met with their first encounter with sea life. Keen Eye spots a pod of dolphins on the horizon, breaching one after another as they make pass after pass in a tight circle. The ship approaches, and the players are able to see that the dolphins are hunting a school of herring. They work together to create a ring which gathers their prey into a tight bunch, and take turns making a pass through the school to the surface. This random encounter submerges players in the ocean environment. They also get the chance to do a little fishing of their own, as the ship will be stocked with several fishing nets. Additionally, if players have access to speak with animals or other such abilities, they will be able to interact with the dolphins. At dusk, the ship begins to enter a bank of thin mist. Before long, the entire ship is shrouded in the stuff, which blocks out the rest of the daylight on the horizon. The mist seems to surround the players, showing them visions of undead reaching out towards them. The players must make a constitution saving throw, taking a small amount of psychic damage on a failed save. The crew must also make this saving throw, and on a fail, 1d4 of the NPCs die, and their morale is reduced. This is a weather effect that has been slightly modified from the Ocean Environs section in Ghost of Saltmarsh. This section outlines several great weather effects, so I recommend checking it out. The mist is a particularly interesting weather effect, as pockets of dark magic in the area have allowed energy from the Shadowfell to seep into the material plane. You can do a ton of things with this as a DM, including, but not limited to, uh, personalizing the visions to the characters' backstories. This encounter also affects the morale of the crew, which can affect their ability to maneuver or defend the ship. The ship finally exits the Bank of Mist and instantly comes upon a large sandbar. If the crew's morale is still in good shape, they will likely be able to maneuver the ship around the sandbar. However, if they're unable to do so, then the ship may sustain critical damage. If this happens, the ship will need to limp to a small jungle island nearby in order to effect repairs. I sometimes enjoy doubling up on random encounters like this because players often breathe a sigh of relief when they feel they've finished an encounter. If you throw another one right after it, even if it's a short one like this, they won't be expecting it. And that is what makes an encounter truly random. As they come ashore on the jungle island, the party begins to notice wreckage of another ship on the beach nearby. This shipwreck could provide enough wood to repair any damage that the player's ship has sustained due to the sandbar, but a short scout of the island could prove to be quite lucrative. This island is home to a rather large vein of gold ore, which the players could harvest at a later time. However, this island is also home to a small band of tribal orcs, who would love a change in their steady diet of fish. This is one of those random encounters that could become the highlight of a several sessions, or just a small side quest depending upon which route your players take. I think encounters like this are what make a game feel really sandboxy. Also it helps me improve on my improv DM skills as I generally only outline these particular side quests. I find that having just a simple outline can be enough to create a fun story with my players. The next day brings good sailing and blue skies once again. The clear breeze and cool water spraying off the bow offer some relief to characters who have been traveling for some time. Around midday, the ship passes between two flat sandy isles over clear light blue water. They pass near the northern island and spot a large circular area of deep dark blue water centered right between the two isles. Peering over the side of the ship, 
they can see that the shallows drop off to unknown depths in the center of this blue hole. Now you can decide exactly what's down there. It may be an area where a ship that carried valuable treasure went missing, or it could be the home of a dragon turtle. The unknown depths of the blue hole offers a myriad of possibilities to the DM, as players will have no idea what they're diving into. Of course, a group would need some good intel about some treasure down there in order to be incentivized to take the leap. I've been dying to have a party dive into one of these to explore, attempt to recover some treasure, and face whatever enemies lurk in the depths. During the night, one of the crew members awakens the party, saying that another ship has been spotted nearby. Going above deck, the party spots a ship that glows with an odd sickly green light. It has spotted the player's ship and makes for an intercept course. Now, the players may choose to fight, firing their weapons at the ghost ship. If they do so, the ghost ship will return fire and do its best to sink the player's vessel. The undead occupants of the ghost ship are not after the players, however. They seek another pirate ship that operates in the area as that one is responsible for sinking their ship, killing its crew. If the players are friendly and offer any information that they have, then the ghost ship's captain will be incredibly thankful and will reward them with loot from pirate ships that they've sunk over the years. This could be a fun RP encounter or an extremely challenging battle, but whatever the case, it will be incredibly fun and memorable. I recommend outlining a few fun characters that your players could run into while they're on the ghost ship. That would make for a truly interesting experience. The ghost ship finally sails away, the crew satisfied that they have extracted all available information from the players. The rest of the night passes slowly as the ship rocks back and forth on the high waves in a small rainstorm. The first rays of sunlight reveal that the party has been blown off course in the storm, and the crew doesn't know exactly where the ship is. A quick scan of the horizon indicates that there is a rather large rocky island nearby. The players may even notice a structure rising from the island. As the players get closer, they notice that the structure is a mysterious lighthouse constructed of white stone. It appears extremely well kept from where the players stand. There is a small dock on the north side of the rocky island with a rowboat tied up, idly drifting in the shallows, and the players notice the small path that leads to the entrance of the lighthouse. Now this random encounter could be entirely void of combat, as it could be in an abandoned lighthouse. Or the lighthouse could be home to an insane hermit, a band of pirates, or even a lone beholder. I enjoy having a few random encounters like this in my back pocket for when a session runs a little too long or a little too short. I like to be able to adjust the length of some of these random encounters on the fly, so I can moderate the flow of the session. The players continue on the open seas throughout the early morning until the lookout in the crow's nest spots a sail on the horizon behind the ship. It sports the well-known black sails with a white skull and crossbones. The players signal to the captain to push ahead at full speed, but somehow the pirates continue to catch up to the player's ship. The pirates fire their weapons as soon as they come into range. Eventually. The enemies are close enough for the players to make out various shapes running around the deck, but still the pirate vessel presses onward in an attempt to ram the player's ship. The pirates ram into the hull of the player's ship, and several of their crew jump across the space between the ships, engaging the crew on the player's side. They will attempt to gather as much loot as they can from the player's ship before sinking it and escaping to their vessel. Now, I love this encounter for several reasons. Firstly, it has a lot of buildup, which can give your players time to think about the imminent threat while building tension. Secondly, even though the fight takes place on solid ground, some of your players may need to take extra precautions against falling into the water. For example, your paladin who usually wears full plate armor may not want to during this battle, because if they're knocked off the top deck of the ship, they will have trouble avoiding sinking. You can also check out the Superior Ship Upgrades section of Ghosts of Saltmarsh for some truly unique upgrades that can make for some great pirate ships. Now I will mention that big battles like this can be extremely hectic. 
One big battle tactic that has worked for me in the past is to do one general roll each round to determine how the fight goes between low level creatures. For example, the player's vessel may be outfitted with a few guards, and the pirates may have a few scouts on their ship. Instead of dragging out combat by flipping back and forth in the monster manual between the scout and the guard page, you can just use one general roll each round to determine how the fight goes. This tactic can greatly reduce the complexity of the battle on the DM side, which can enable you to focus more on your players. The player ship passes through the darkened waters near another rocky island. As they pass the island's natural harbor, they begin to notice a clack sound emanating from the hull of their ship. The players peer over the side of their ship and see the harbor is littered with the floating bones of various creatures. They even spot a few floating humanoid skulls. If the players visit any nearby villages, the residents will be quick to share stories of the mysterious island and the necromancer who allegedly lives there. These stories will turn out to be true, but only part of the truth. The necromancer happens to be a faithful servant of the demon lord Orcus. For years, this necromancer has been dutifully collecting the bones of his victims, in the hope of providing sufficient tribute to Orcus in exchange for immortality. Now you can choose to make this random encounter a single fight where the players are a easily able to navigate the island and find the necromancer's lair, or you could turn this into several sessions. Perhaps the necromancer has created a dungeon underneath his island which the players will need to navigate in order to find him. Now, I particularly enjoy mentioning names like Orcus at the table because the name elicits a certain fear in veteran players. The group makes their way from the island, putting the necromancer behind them for good. The crew spots bad weather on the horizon, and attempting to avoid it, they keep the ship close to the coastline for the rest of the afternoon. This is unfortunate, as their course will take them directly past the cliffside where a young black dragon has made its lair. The dragon has been preying on small vessels, sea life, and herd animals from nearby villages. It spots the player's ship and rouses from its lair to attack it from the sky or from under the water. Now if a young black dragon is too simple for your group, feel free to upgrade the creature. Since black dragons are amphibious, I think they are perfect for ocean environments. They may not be the apex predator in this environment, but their unique set of skills make them a formidable aquatic hunter. I hope you've enjoyed these 10 random encounters for open oceans. If you have a favorite, make sure to let me know about it in the comments. I'd also love to hear about any underwater black dragon that you've used or faced. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button to see more D&D videos in the near future. Until next time, stay curious adventurers.